Ooh. Hola. Hello there. Hey, Ben. Howdy. Hey, wait a minute. I put my headphones on because you're always wearing your headphones. I wanted to be like you. No, no, I, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm a, a trendsetter. <laughs> and I'm a sheep. <laughs> <laughs> Not now. You're the one wearing headphones. You're a trendsetter. Oh. I wanted you to be a trendsetter. <laughs> you're so kind. Uh, that's what I'm here for. You should hear about UMass and the COVID. They said that it's a little better. Yeah, I heard but it was I'm not. about 400, but it was, I heard 600 cases. Yeah. Well, they're stupid. Oh, wow. That's why they're going to school. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is that what it is? <laughs> Absolutely. Now, we got to be careful because the press may be on the call. Oh, that's right. I don't see them on there, so. Glenn has feelings too. Glenn? No. <laughs> no, I like the voice from the dark. <laughs> it is the dark. Good evening, everybody. Why, why do we not see you, Mr. McCrory? You know, so I've been doing this on this iPad and it, I can't get the camera to allow the access. I'm multitasking doing, um, online training on the laptop so that's why i'm not on that but i've tried doing it before on the ipad and the camera it won't allow it's i've been through the settings of it hmm. i guess i'll have to have somebody smarter than a highway guy look at it that's ben <laughs> i can tell you what the problem is right now it's an ipad it, it, oh, all right it's I've, awesome. I've heard the apple product from somebody else with your last name <laughs> ipad <laughs> I don't know. We have a lot of Smiths around here. <laughs> the conspiracy. It is. It is. Oh my gosh. You're muted. Yeah, you're muted, Brian. He probably likes it that way. I was gonna say it's better for all of you. Okay. You're probably making fun of all of us. Between you and Glenn, you can't speak, and Glenn won't show us his picture. Neither will I. <laughs> hey, Pete. How are you doing? All right, I think, um, I think that's everybody I know. Jake can't make it tonight. Okay. Oh, we're Jakeless. It's just the four of you <laughs> and Glenn and I. Do, do any of you pay your electric bill by any chance? I pay it every month. It is Wait. so dark. Every one of you are so dark. You don't want to be seen. <laughs> I pay my electrical bill. <laughs> they love me. <laughs> okay. Are you ready to, to begin, Mr. Chairman? Yes. Let us begin, Brian. <laughs> oh, we are in the man. <laughs> I know you're all excited to rehash the capital plan again. Sure. Deb, should I be taking minutes? No, I got it. <laughs> I mean, I should say yes to that, but no, I've got it. Thank you, Deb. You're Thank welcome. Deb. Uh, welcome, everybody, to the Capital Planning Committee meeting for Wednesday, February 17th, 2021. Participants are notified that this meeting is being recorded. <clears throat> for this meeting, the town is using a product called GoToWebinar. Attendees using the GoToWebinar Go to app online or on a mobile device should be able to participate. Attendees participating by phone are in a listen-only mode. A few examples of how you may submit a question or raise your hand. All questions submitted will be answered at the discretion of the board chair and they become part of the permanent record. Um, so thank you all for agreeing to meet the um, the purpose of this meeting is to potentially reconsider the FY22 plan or other recommendations as it relates to Church Street. Um, the bridge we mentioned back in December needed to be put on the capital plan. It was gonna be the first of the municipal bridges to be addressed. And we knew it would be probably a two year process where we would do engineering in one year and construction probably in the next. 
And so I think tentatively, uh, we discussed maybe for the 2023 year that we would bring the engineering forward. And uh, Glenn had met with our traffic engineer back in December. They sent us a proposal. And I believe at our January meeting, we looked uh, at that at that engineering proposal that would take everything from concept all the way through to construction. Um, Glenn obviously is on the call and can speak better to this than I can, but uh, was contacted by Mass DOT about two weeks ago, and they gave us a courtesy heads up that they are going to require the town to reduce uh, traffic on that bridge within about two to three weeks um, <laughs> with a suggested detour plan. Um, and then that will leave the town in a situation where um, we will have to act potentially sooner than we were initially planning. Um, so I, I don't know if, if Glenn wants to take it from there about what was recommended. I do have the, the proposal from Weston and Samson on the screen. I have a brief memo that was in your packet that I had shared with the FinCom and the Board of Selectmen. Yeah. Um, and I've got your 2022 draft capital plan that you submitted to the board and the FinCom um, yeah. for your consideration. So what we did last week, the recommendation is to not, not so it was a one lane or close it. Um, my initial thoughts of one lane is it's going to reduce it down to half the width of the travel area now. After we got the, not the official letter, but after we got the findings from it, they're not saying reduce it down to one lane. They're saying reduce it down four feet. Um, uh, from the upper side of the bridge um, on the right side if you're headed north of Church Street. Mm -hmm. So last week we laid out some cones and saw what it was. It averages between 16 and 18 feet wide, which it's not a terrible travel lane if you're going straight. So right. because of the way the bridge sets, it does uh, you know pose some problems if the truck exclusion followed through and not just because it's on paper i would say this would be a pretty easy recommendation um but they're still coming down mm -hmm. north street yes, up church street as we know yep so it's still it's it's not a bad travel travel lane for regular passenger vehicles even the fuel delivery trucks um that have to service the uh you know houses um that that's not a problem so i met with uh the engineer last friday also because the state is requiring uh, an engineer stamp of a traffic plan even though it's our bridge you would think we should be able to do what we want with it because they inspect it they need a stamp on everything right. um so we don't have it in writing from them yet and i don't know if i should speak on what probably their recommend recommendations are going to be because we don't have it in writing yet brian guidance on that or no okay. you can do it okay i would just caveat that we don't have their official opinion in writing and and the board and and you haven't met um to discuss this in public yet so right so w what he recommended is their uh um their department is already aware of the bridge and by going over Google Maps and whatever, we had discussed the other day about having um, a, a bi-directional travel lane across the bridge with temporary traffic lights. He is suggesting that we don't spend the money on the traffic lights and that you make each of them one way, whether it's one way up church street and down north street only or up north and down church street one way only don't make it harder than what it needs to be yeah um i think it's so, going to be down church street either way it's going to be an issue linda that, that bridge cannot be in a worse spot um for any traffic concerns because of route two because of the narrow north street because of the short section off of Route 2 in either direction um, mm -hmm. and, and the placement of it. So, so they're going to put their recommendation in. Um, we could follow it. We could not and give them another suggestion 
Um, like what? Well, like I said, so so what's that? Do you have another suggestion? Closing it. Oh, you mean making it a gated street? Make Church Street a gated community? Yeah, make it a gated community. Because be, eventually... What a bunch of elitists. <laughs> eventually, the, the bridge is going to be closed for construction. So we do need to figure out what is going to happen at that point for traffic. Right. My suggestion would be to close it now, figure out what that is going to look like come construction. It, it gives a little bit more time for uh, making a decision the one way is either way. But at this point, I guess we're at a financial part of this, not a decision making on, on traffic no, patterns. I still have some more questions. Um, yeah. You said, uh, well, Let's say that we had the money. When would we think the construction would start? Probably not until summer or so, right? Probably a year from now. A year? It's yeah. at least 10 months probably of conceptual design, refining that design, uh, the environmental permitting with the Conservation Commission, Army Corps of Engineers, um, and all of that work. There's probably site visits and at least probably two, three meetings till orders of conditions are issued, oh my recorded. God. Uh, we just did, um, Mariah and Glenn worked with the same engineering team on Wheelock Street just to do the culverts. Oh, yeah, yeah. It took nine to 10 months. We just, I'm recording the orders of condition this week. Um, um, I'm a little dead end street. Can I make a suggestion that it not be closed until the construction starts because um, for the same reason that Glenn just talked about is that North Street is very, um, it's not very wide. And um, I, I've gone up North Street when there was a tractor trailer coming down and there is no wiggle room at all. Um, and the sidewalks are right there. So um, I, I guess my recommendation for that, and I know that's not what is on the agenda tonight, is that the the traffic come down church street because i think you have there's a better site um plan when you come out of church street than if you're coming out of north street no doubt the only problem i have with that linda is yeah. you're crossing traffic in front of the house here and you're looking at potential accidents yeah yeah That's yeah but I think you're looking at more potential accidents if people are coming out of North Street and trying to take a left. Yeah, especially now with the, to do. the possibility of the store reopening, I can see that happening. Uh, even did. with the store closed. I, I, I'm, not, I'm just I, saying down the road. Yeah, oh yeah. yeah. I had to wait this morning. I had, a, I, I had a dentist appointment at seven o'clock. I went down the street and I had to stop in front of Johnson's house because I had a tractor trailer truck making the turn to come up North Street in front of me. So I had to I had to back up a good 50 yards before anything happened. Mm -hmm. So it is, like you said, it is narrow down there. And uh, no matter how we do it, it's going to be tough. Exactly. Agreed. Exactly. We're going to add uh, more signage. Uh, I wish that the, the truck exclusion made uh, the difference we had hoped. Uh, uh, can I... To... I'm sorry, but I do have a, an incident where Northfield did stop uh, a carpenter that lives in this area for a commercial truck in oh, the really? last snowstorm. Um, so I think that maybe they are on board. We, I think we need to make it clear to them that this is about to, to happen um, and ask for their assistance on that. My understanding is they did improve some signage on 63 and 10, um, but similar to the signage we put on two, it, it's only part of the, the conversation. Uh, we're going to order some more signage, and, and we've put the flashing sign down there before. At some point, it's all white noise. Nobody's, it's not necessarily garnering the attention we need, and there's a concern about pushing traffic to Mountain Road and High Street right. um, that we need to be careful of. If GPS redirects folks into one of those directions, um, especially if it's a tractor trailer, we're going to have more problems. So right. how do we do route uh, detour and route signs? Um, the state gave us some suggested signage, um, and we're gonna we're pricing out what that order is. So that may help. Um, none of this is there's no one solution to any of this. You know, to, to right. Glenn's point, we will be closed at some point when we do construction at, at minimum. 
And so we will have to contend with those realities. My concern is I'm going to see 18 wheelers stuck on church street as a dead end and trying to get off of it. Um, and now they're going to back in the route two to do that. And we tried to make that clear to, to the folks. I've, I've seen that. I've already we're, seen that. And we're concerned about that. Um, and, and I'm concerned about the, the businesses with their proximity to North street on the corner. Um, we asked them about installing a traffic light to let, uh, traffic off even if it was temporary uh -huh. uh, they're willing to let us apply for the permit and for us to do this so um are you saying a traffic light at route two and north yeah. yeah i i don't know why the town of irving should have to do that um i don't believe the town of gill puts in the traffic light at at two and main road um so i, I a little disappointed in the response and we asked if we should proactively apply for the permit just so we could respond quickly if we had to. Um, they don't want to review a permit unless we're going to use it. So, so they they would much rather us try incrementally these different things and then go to the next level if we have to. So the first thing is make a decision about are we closing or reducing. If we're closing, that changes the signage drastically. If we're reducing, we have to figure out one way directional. Um, and, and that's what Glenn and the engineers have been discussing. And that's what the board is going to work on Monday night. And then the next question is, if if this is a 10 month design process, design through permitting, um, it, it could be a little quicker, but I don't think we should get our hopes up and thinking it's too much quicker. And then you've got a month of bidding and at least two, three months of construction. Um, the quickest you're getting this thing done is is just shy of a year and a half. So do we wait until fiscal year 22 starts on July 1st and change your capital plan? Do we wait as we originally were planning to maybe do the engineering of fiscal year 23? And so that means keeping everything closed for about a year and a half. Or do we do something out of sequence and consider bringing this to the voters at a special town meeting sooner and potentially repurposing either free cash um, to at least do the engineering work. It doesn't, I, I don't even know how to budget for this because we don't have an opinion on probable cost yet. So I, it's too premature to say construction, but do we want to think about asking the select board and the FinCom to consider a, an article for free cash? Um, and you could still reduce your 22 yeah. capital plan. There's so many ways you can approach this. None of this is great. Yeah. I, Brian, if we were to do a free cash article, I'm just thinking, so if a special town meeting was held, that would be what, probably March? We're tentatively we're looking at like a late March uh, special so, town meeting. Does that really, in, in the grand scope of all of this, does it really speed the process up? The only reason, it would only speed it up by about two months. Okay. Um, you did the May articles as a fiscal 21 and not wait till July 1. <clears throat> How we craft that article is is the determinant. Um, the only reason it would make sense is that we were already calling a special time meeting. Uh, we have that emergency generator at POTW number one that blew up in October, and so we we need to get that fixed. And the street lights, like we discussed at your last meeting on Main Street, have been broken for now a few months, and so we wanted to get those things fixed. And we're working on rescinding that borrowing authority for the dryers. So there were a few reasons we were already going to meet. Um, it, it would just be a matter of adding one more, one more unanticipated thing on, on the STM. Um, okay. In terms of free cash, you do have it. Um, it's up to the, the board and FinCom ultimately if they want to source it from free cash. But we do have $500,000 in free cash that has not been allocated for anything at this point. But if we allocate any of these funds at special, it means I don't have it to balance your budget for fiscal year 22, which is what the FinCom and the board are going to be working on Monday night. I'm going to give them an analysis of, of our budget um, and how you use free cash is going to impact that. Deb, the other, the other part of this that I forgot to mention to all of you is when we get this official letter, it's a two week time frame um, in order for us to start action on either closing the bridge or you know putting it down to one lane not not that we have to you know go right out and construct this thing like i said in a year 
but within the two weeks that we get the letter, something needs to be done with traffic on, on the bridge. Right. And signage, et cetera. Yes. Yep. So one other question to actually maybe back this all up, there's a few different things we need to tease out. The the road signage is probably a few thousand dollars. The the purchasing of the signs and the posts and getting into the ground and doing the detours, all of that is probably one to two thousand dollars worth of stuff we need to buy. We have one large solar powered uh, sign that we can program, and we we've used it on Church Street before, and so we can put that at the opening to Church Street again. But that doesn't help us with North Street, and it doesn't help us with the town line coming from Northfield. So there was a question of whether or not, you know, to, to Glenn's point, we are, at first we're thinking maybe we need to buy these temporary traffic lights. If we don't need to do that right now, would it make sense to invest in another one of these solar powered signs? They're not cheap, but to help us with communications, any changes in the travel routes to the plan, um, those are about, I think the one we purchased is $17,000. So it's about 18 when you get done purchasing all the components for it. Um, yeah. But it's ours and we can use it for anything else. It, it's it, the last one you had, which was more simple. Uh, it simply did uh, speed, and this one does speed plus messaging. Um, I think you got 10 to 12 years out of the last one. So they do they do last many years, should I, Pete? Um, so, so that was a question. Is that something as part of the communication plan that we need for? You know, I was trying to make it clear to MassDOT, we're not just talking about the residents. They thought we could just communicate to everybody and everybody would be on the same page. I tried to get them to understand that GPS has made this a cut through for people trying to get north and south. And um, and we don't know these people. So there's no efficient way for us to inform them about what they're, they're about to encounter. Um, but you all as our residents will feel the impacts of this. And so we, we need to find a way to let these people passing through know that they really need to find another detour, another route. We may need to update that on the fly, like like Glenn was alluding to. Things could change and evolve. So, stationary metal signs are only part of the communication plan. Um, so that's one capital project potentially is to to do some signage. Um, and then two is, do you want to do any part of that engineering? And and you could break those tasks into smaller components, or we could just do the full request. Whenever you want to do that. Um, there's maybe pros and cons to either approach. Um, so that could be a capital request you consider sooner than later. I mean, it, at the end of the day, this bridge belongs to all of you and it's we wouldn't be the first town with a Coles Bridge. So that I, I don't want to, to dramatize that we need to do this tomorrow. There's going to be an impact no matter what we do. So if, if we choose to wait and deal with this in a few months or to deal with this in, in a year, that just, elongates how long we have to be inconvenienced with this with this burden um and the cost and the cost would go up you're right hmm. um i can't fathom the residents are going to want to live with that for a long period of time and i know i did ask specifically um at the last joint fincom board of selectmen meeting um the board of selectmen and how quickly they would like to see this done um and it was pretty urgent in their opinion right i mean I'm, a, I'm glad that that we did the inventory project a year ago i'm glad that glenn had already asked for an engineering proposal again i thought we were being proactive and getting it on the plan for next year i didn't realize that we were going to get this phone call um, but we're not scrambling to do that work we have that information um it's it's still an inconvenience because this is not the capital project that you thought we were working on this year um and we as a town only have so much capacity it, there's only so many projects we can handle at the same time and right and that means we've got two wastewater construction projects new sidewalks on the other side of town um plus potentially the designing building of a bridge and or the designing and building of a dpw building so that's five construction style engineering through completion projects for public works it's a lot is it realistic brian <laughs> if we were to do I mean, we've got glenn here too so i mean i guess my question that that's probably one of my first questions is is it actually realistic to try and do this within the next let's call it two years by the time it's all said and done right 
yes, it's realistic to do it. And the, the reality is the design portion of this, it's all, the, the challenge is it's all happening at once. The, the design of this is going to take, as we discussed, probably eight to 10 months. The, the DPW building will probably be designed quicker, but those two things would be happening simultaneously, right? Um, the construction work of the wastewater line on um, Irving Center, which is also going to disrupt traffic. I want to remind everybody we're doing that project this summer too. Oh, yeah. Design. <laughs> I forgot. I know. The, right in time for the vacation season with everybody taking their trips and, and going to the lake and all of that stuff. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, it, it's permitted. It's it's designed. It's probably ready to go to bid in the next two months. So that project is at a different stage where we're getting ready to do construction this summer. This project would be probably final design in the fall. Uh, the DPW building would probably be finished design-wise for the fall. Just because you've done the design does not mean you have to go right out to bid. So we could put a pin in either of these projects in terms of bidding and construction um, to, to there, the pressure. Is there a way to line them up kind of like dominoes so that they're not all smack, but, you know, one is done and then we go to the next and if the design is going to take eight to ten months eight to ten months from here is christmas mm -hmm. i don't imagine that they would start construction in nope. december probably no, more we, like go no ahead. heating if if you wanted to go to construction in the spring as opposed right. to waiting until the summer yeah we may need to plan a special town meeting during the winter early spring um, okay. Because you would finally have a an opinion of probable cost. Now you could just, I mean, again, having it for December may mean instead the capital committee may say this is our project, and instead construction happens in January, in July or August of 22, so possibly year 23, and maybe our project is the bridge, um, and you would have those numbers for your capital review when you're starting to work on that 23 budget. So. I agree. I, I wish we could space these out like dominoes, but it may make sense to have the planning work and the permitting work start now so that right. you all and the FinCom and the select board have access to that opinion of probable cost and the final design so that you can make whatever decisions you need to make in December and January. Um, Ryan, do you get any ideas how much the engineering studies and you know all the all the preliminary stuff would go? 200,000? Yeah. It's, the, co it, the cost for engineering on the bridge is 200000 from concept all the way through all that permitting and the public work um, through bidding and construction, okay. which is a and, lot. Um, but, but at least it's an understanding of that full, that full uh, spectrum of work. We could break it into smaller groupings, and you could probably, I think I said task one through seven, we could probably get away with, and that would get you to the public participation part. But that's the bulk of the work. That's about 130,000 of the of the contract is is all of that work, and then bidding and construction and the final bid set is the remaining 60. So it it, it may not be advantageous to really break it up. Ryan, you said um, free cash is going to impact the budget. Can you give us an idea how? If we wanted to pull, let's say we pulled this 200,000 from free cash, how will that impact our fiscal budget? Well, that's a really great question that I should <laughs> answer. I'm going to have that for you tomorrow. Um, what I would say is this, and, and the board's going to feel differently about this. I ran this past Jake and, and Bill last week. We've got some placeholders in the budget for commitments that we've made to the public. So, for instance, we promised that we were going to put $275,000 a year for five years back into general stabilization for the library project. Yep. And we need to make good on that yep. because that was a yep. promise that we made. Does that mean that you can then, after we've made that article to put $275,000 into stabilization, would the citizens then support $200,000 back out of one of the stabilization accounts to fund a different project? So you've done good on what we promised and we can make a promise in this one that we'll repay this one as well. Um, but that way there's an accountability for the, the use of that money 
I do want to point out, and I don't have the exact number because um, I think we should have gotten it maybe a week ago, the Bartholomew report for the end of the December 31st period should be available by now. Um, that would have your investment portfolio, but you put in $544,000 in October. You put another $275,000 in at the July annual. So those two, you put in basically three quarters of a million dollars um, in the fall uh, back into stabilization. So that account is upwards of $9 million again. So oh, nice. stabilization's in a good place, but I, but I bring that up to say we were using free cash, that 275 commitment. I was taking out of free cash in the past. Um, we also were putting, trying to put $400,000 a year into capital stabilization. And last year I used free cash and I used raising appropriate to balance that out. I think I took 250 out of free cash and I think I took 150 out of raising appropriate to put into capital stabilization. So if this year we decreased any of those uh, commitments into stabilization, we could use free cash for um, something like this. It, it, it's, I don't want it to sound like semantics because it's not, but do you do an article to put things in and an article to consider withdrawing, or do you just reduce your intended uh, deposit into stabilization and instead have an article to appropriate for free cash? It, it, it's still, it's all the same thing in the end. Um, yeah. It's in terms of uh, presentation and and any of the commitments that we've made to the citizens. As long as I think, as long as we're very clear with the citizens about okay. what we're doing, what the purpose is, where the sources of revenue are, um, I think that's what's critical. But I, I think you have several different options. Um, so that's the big the big question is that I am not concerned about the the budget request from the, the departments. Most of your departments kept it under the two and a half summer level funded. The school itself came in at 2.2 for the elementary. Um, and the the secondary was a little bit higher, but that's a smaller portion of the budget. And the, uh, the tech school is actually a slight reduction. So education, I'm not worried about. Most of your other departments were either level funded or just under that two and a half percent. So we're in a good position there. We have some new growth coming in um, from the solar farms that are going online. Uh, so sure. revenue wise, we're in an okay position. It's that question about how how do we want to use this free cash? And I have to say I'm pleasantly surprised. There's more free cash than I was anticipating. We had a very tight budget last year. We had a lot of unanticipated expenses that sort of hit. We had some broken trucks and a few other things that we had to fix that I thought was gonna really tighten that free cash. Um, and we still ended up in a in a really good position. So um Financially, you're in a good position to to handle this, even though this is very stressful and not the news of the way that we want to approach a project like this. So if we go with free cash, you're mm -hmm. not really asking us for any anything other than maybe a suggestion to go with that. And wouldn't we need to then put the solar powered uh, signs? um into our capital plan for 2022 yes and yes with okay. one other <laughs> another possibility if I, I put it up on the screen that's your and i can make it bigger that's your capital plan that you presented <laughs> to the board in the fincom and they supported it um another question is do we take anything off if we put this project forward is there anything you want to take off because that will also change that mix of how I, I need to balance the budget for you all. And I'm, I don't want to pretend like this is an easy uh, conversation because I don't know what we would take off. I don't have a great recommendation. I, I looked through them and I mean, I would say at least all of the big items um, mm -hmm. I felt needed to be there. And so I certainly didn't want to take a bunch of little items to try to make 200,000, but to make, Agreed. yeah. Um, but I mean, I guess um, now I'm worried about the solar powered signs. So. Right. Brian, We're only looking at one, right, Brian? One or we two. Have, we we have already got one. one. 
yep. we have we, one. Yep. One more is probably what we need to to be able to reposition. I mean, uh, Sergeant Hulse usually moves them around, and his staff is usually responsible for programming them. Um, I'm feeling like we we may become more adept at this in public works as well, as we need them for these different projects. Um, so, so yeah, I think they would probably be less used for speed at the moment and more for communication around this area as we're uh, encountering problems. But it's about I would have then, Glenn. Yes. Okay, we we are pro, you know we are proposed fifty thousand dollars for new cemetery feasibility and preparation. Could we reduce that? Well, um, I, I would be willing to put both of my projects off, you know, for that. There's 150,000 for the dry storage building. No, no. 75,000 mm -hmm. for, you know, the, the mountain road drainage. That mountain road, the edge of the, the cemetery has been like this for years. I don't think one more year is going to cause any damage to that. If it makes this project easier, more simplified and can get moving quicker, I'd be willing to put those two off for for another year until this bridge is done. I'd say absolutely not. I've lived in this town long enough to know that it's too easy to keep putting things off. I mean, that bridge was on the agenda back 10, 12 years ago. Um, sure. And and I, I, I don't want to be. I don't want to be putting things off. I think you need the dry storage in the office building. I think you need to do the um, the the drainage on a mountain road. Um, so, nah. <laughs> so I agree with that. And my concern is knowing the capital plan, like our 25 year outlook and the the pack, you know, even our mm -hmm. five year outlook. Um, I would be concerned knowing that there are things like fire trucks and really, really big ticket things coming up. That if we were to push yes. something like mountain road drainage, then we're pushing it potentially for a few years, not just a year. I, I would right. be, I would just be concerned about how how things got shoved around. Um, Brian, the only question I do have in regards to all of this, thinking of the um, solar sign, mm -hmm. is are the is the assessor's office one hundred percent ready to move forward with upgrades? The only thing that we found because out. Could, go ahead. I was going to say, if they could be put off one year, then that would free up the 20000 for the sign. So we found out this week from, from DOR that they have changed their guidance. So they used to want us to do a software update in the assessing office the year that we're doing revaluation. So all of, I don't know why you would want all of that chaos to happen in one year, but I kind of wanted it all to happen in one year. Um, apparently they realized that that was a little chaotic and they have asked the Board of Assessors to consider doing it the year after. So we are in a reval year this year. We're doing that work as we speak. And so those new values will be certified on January 1 of 2022. So, um, so I guess this appropriation could come later in the year and be like a late FY22 project, or if it was a, if it was appropriated, it could last until the beginning of 23. So could it be pushed a year? Yes, I guess is the, the long and the short of it. We thought we had to run quickly and do it this summer while we were doing the revaluation process. And it turns out we could push that out. Mm -hmm. um, so that's that is potentially one place. So I do know that Jackie and Jake um, and I were meeting with the software vendors to try to get an understanding. So I do know that there's some interest in in making sure that we can work on this. It is a big project. Pete, to answer your question about the cemetery, we're at a threshold of the cemetery where we need to move on it. Yep. Um, once you hit a hundred, I'm going to call it vacancies um at the cemetery you need to have a plan in place um you know for, for the for the next cemetery and that's that's where we're at now i think we just went just under hmm. okay I'm, I'm gonna we're just throwing that out there because you know i didn't you know what what deb was just saying you know we can i didn't realize with the uh the whole program there with the assessors so 
and, and then twenty thousand dollars. You know, we cut it off at six hundred. If we had to come up with another twenty thousand dollars, I don't think we would have a problem with that. Right. Right. Yeah, I agree. So, but nicer if we can switch. Right. I I will find whatever whatever you need me to find. I, I can move things around and and I can go back to the revenue projections. I typically budget with no new growth, and we've had new growth the last two years. I just didn't want to count on it. Um, and that's probably also part of why we have a little more free cash in the account. Um, I know the first solar array came online this year, um, and I was out doing a site visit with the second solar array today. So I know that the larger one's coming online soon. So, um, where's the second one? Uh, out on the Prondecki property off of Route 2. Oh, okay. I forgot about that one. That's out of yeah. sight, out of mind. <laughs> I, it's the amazing project. I went out there, I couldn't believe how, uh, how large it is. Um, but that will be coming online and so that that structured tax agreement goes into place as well um so you'll see not only the the um value on the real property coming in as the tax rates get updated but also the personal property has already been structured for 20 years you all adopted that at town meeting so um so that's already coming into so we can find it if, if you all want to go forward with this um we can reduce things if you wanted to. It really is up to the, the four of you. Well, I mean, I, I certainly agree with the dev. I mean, uh, if the assessors don't need the software in this next year and they're going to be doing the evaluation and then the reevaluations and then need it in the following year, I don't mind moving a, a $20,000 cost okay. and replacing it with um 18 or so for the solar array it's solar array now you got me going the okay. solar sign okay <laughs> to cover it Brian, the twenty thousand dollars that would cover it okay all right so we wouldn't have to cut anything else to get that no and i think um, for me my only caveat would be because we did discuss this with the board of selectmen and it was signed off on um it was just an just clearing it with Jackie and making sure that F pushing it one year is genuinely realistic for her because we did we've kind of given the impression that we're going to do it yeah. so I hate to just turn around and say oh hey yeah. <laughs> sorry we're not yeah. um, so as long as she genuinely feels it can be pushed and I would okay. just say I'm just going to throw it out there if for some reason they came back and said absolutely not then I would just say can we find you know 18,000 somewhere else okay yeah I would agree so can I also just say, if we go forward with this and you all want us to, to add the engineering project on top of this, uh, I I think I would want to hold firm the following year that we drastically downsize the number of projects in 2023. Um, I know I'm exhausted, I know the staff's exhausted, and we've been discussing capacity, Mariah and I, tried to revise the master plan list today and there's 25 projects that we're trying to complete between now and the end of the next six quarters um and it's just i i just know the staff will be burnt by the end of this and as taxpayers there's only so much you all can do too so i would say if we know we have a fire truck coming up we know we will have to construct the bridge that we're about to design um i think we need to then take a pause and maybe the capital project list is a few projects 23 and not as many as we have here and, what about grant funded ones brian would you say sir what about grant front if we were able to get grant funding on certain projects i mean we're going to keep exploring that like the the culvert projects and a few others we're going to we're going to look for grant funding and even for this bridge we're going to search for grant funding my goal is not to have to come back to you and ask for all the money for construction but with that comes additional responsibilities too uh, in and if we have to push off applying, I mean, that was part of the conversation I had with Mariah today. She had a list of grants that we could apply for, and we made notes. Let's look at this again next year because we just can't take on the contractual requirements, um, the reporting, and, and meeting the deadlines. It's it's yeah. beyond our capacity. So I think yeah. yes, but we should be very strategic about what we go after. They're all good ideas, and there's a want to do a lot of them. Um, I just want us to be realistic. If we, if we can't hold the projects together, we're going to end up with a bunch of work and, and not the outcome that you wanted. Um, so we just need a balance. Yeah, yeah. I, I 
that makes sense for me. Yeah, it does. Can I point one thing out in the um, the Weston and Sampson um, Church Street Bridge replacement letter, et cetera? It's not Jack's Brook. It's Kiep Brook. I I think they keep getting this. MassDOT does this to us too. I think they keep yeah. getting it off of the, the Google Maps. Yeah. Jack Brook runs up behind Deb. I mean, uh, yeah, yeah. Deb Merrill's place. Yep. Right. It goes into the pond, and you know, Kia Brook comes down from what is it? Uh, where the guy the gets, went to uh, Stratton Mountain near Grand. Correct. Jack we're going to be by my house. Right. We're going to make sure that we're going to make sure that all the maps and all of the 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 information that's presented to you all publicly is is accurate. So even if they they present this type of stuff, we'll see it in draft format, and we'll correct it before it goes public. Okay. So you do know it's Kia Brook. Yes. Okay, thank you. It happens all the time. I don't know why it's I don't know why they think it's interchangeable. It's not Jack um, maybe. Oh. Um so how do you all want me to present this to the board and the FinCom for their meeting on Monday? Do you want me to to say that there's a recommendation to do the engineering and source it out of free cash or are you thinking in a different option or do you want to delay? I don't want to delay. Okay. I, don't want to delay. All right. I agree with Pete. Okay. And is, I don't free want to delay. Cash, is free cash an appropriate? I think it makes the most sense at this moment to recommend free cash. Now the board and FinCon may come back and say, no, I want to take it out of stabilization. That's their call. Um, but I think my initial analysis will be based on recommending it comes out of free cash. Yeah, I don't want it to come out of the um, capital plan. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I think it I makes mean, sense. The I would that I would ask then is if, if we're talking about delaying, what's our delaying oh. to criteria? What are we delaying until? That's a really good question. Um, what don't we have that we need? I mean. Time. If, we, if we started if we started immediately as we discussed you're going to get your opinion of probable costs and your plans for december so so delaying even if we delayed it to july that means you're not going to get the information until next may so if, if if the goal was to align with your other financial procedures we're at that point talking either a special in fy23 or holding off until fy24 so that I mean that's sort of the repercussions of pushing this thing out is you is the the reality that you wouldn't have your information, your opinion of probable cost, and the design that you could put out to bid in time with your other financial procedures. So I think that's the advocacy for doing it a little earlier and doing it now, even though we really probably don't have the capacity to do it all at the moment. Um, but if you pushed it out and that meant one lane traffic on the bridge that's a decision you all could make I, I i don't want to make it sound like that's not an option it, it is an option i don't think the preferred option but it is an option one good thing about delaying is that like i mean like you mentioned we have a ton of projects mm -hmm. going on and if we delay it we have the ability to cut down the list of projects that we want to work on and make it so that we have the capacity to do it as opposed to adding something onto a list that's already full. Agreed. It just means if we do that, and regardless of how we do this, I, I have to be honest, I'm a little uh, surprised that so far the public response has been as calm as it's been. I know that this has been a discussion for almost two decades now. Mm. Uh, this is going to be very disruptive. So I, I can sense that there's going to be some residents who are frustrated. We're going to be uh, concerned that action may not have been taken quicker to, to remedy this before we got to this point. I think that's that's fair critique if it comes. I just think there'll be some residents who are going to say, what's the plan and what's the realistic timeline? And if we say it's got to be pushed out, I think we want to just be really clear about holding to that timeline to the best of our ability because residents are going to be counting on this to, to be as yeah. least disruptive as possible. And that's, yeah. that's fair. You all live there. So yeah. no, they don't just forget. Know. Yeah. 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 Don't forget the state was going to put this on your list 10 years ago. 
and then no, they took it, then then they they took it off. off you know and <laughs> yeah right as soon as they took it back off last year pete is when we finally said we're done asking and done having that negotiation with them and uh and glenn went to the traffic engineers and said let's start putting a proposal together on this so so you're right there's been a lot of back and forth with MassDOT over this yeah we could have done this years ago right yeah i think one of the reasons why maybe folks aren't as up in arms about it is i mean everybody everybody drives over the bridge and everybody right. realizes this is not a quick fix right right can can I ask some questions uh, or just ask for some clarity in regard to the two week time frame? So we're waiting for a letter from Weston and Sampson. No, uh, it's no. The bridge inspection. Oh, yep. But so do we have any control over when that letter comes? <laughs> no. Back to the post office. They can probably delay it for you. <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> true. Yeah. The most inconvenient time possible. So, oh, so very soon. Um, right. So we have two weeks in right. from when we receive that letter. Yes. That's what we were told. Okay. Which is why they were the individual who contacted us was kind enough to give Glenn the heads up because if it came quickly, we'd have a very compact time to organize all these meetings. He was trying well, then, to give the biggest window of time to act. Then why are we looking for a, a solar powered sign for FY22? I think we're going to have to buy it out of FY21 money. Possible. I mean, I while I'm putting together the article, if you wanted it to be a special article recommendation for the, the March special town meeting, I, I could put that forward. Well, here's a question. If you put it forward, we, we vote it in. How long does it take to get? Uh, I want to say the one that we ordered took me four weeks from when I ordered to when it finally it was freighted in. I think it was four weeks. So it's huh. not a huge it's not a huge wait time, um, but it, it's not something that you can get in a week. But it's more than two weeks. Yes. We, yeah, we may be able to borrow one again from from the state uh for this if if we get that letter i mean hey they, they're the ones sending us the letter you think they should uh right lend out some equipment if you know if we need it so right the time we can purchase one so that may be an option also okay we we tried to make this really clear that this is going to impact route two as much as it's going to impact north and church street yeah I, I think they're a little skeptical that maybe i was being a little dramatic about this so uh, uh you're not <laughs> I, know. I tried we tried telling them how quickly the traffic backs up uh, on a busy ski weekend or, oh, yeah. or just one of those Fridays or those Sundays when people are returning. Sunday afternoon. But yep. you know, we've been, yep. well, we've been fortunate because of COVID this year, because a lot of stuff, yep. is, it's not as bad as it's been, but it can get, this, this week here is, I'm surprised with, with school vacation week. Right. Uh, well, well, vaccine became more readily available. I assume that we're going to start to see people start to return to some of their habits later in this year. I don't know how quickly that will be, but I could see that foliage season or ski season next year um, could start to feel like it normally does. Oh yeah. I I got a question, Brian. If um if we do decide to shut down Church Street, um, does that affect the fire department? Yep. I know that uh, Phil. Uh, or Tifonka was talking to Glenn about the turning radius he needs and, and what he needs to go over. We originally thought they were going to reduce the rating of the bridge, and we were concerned that they wouldn't allow us to drive the apparatus over it anymore. Um, but it sounded like to me in the meeting that we had with them that they actually are not going to reduce the rating. Is that correct, Glenn? Correct. They're not derating the bridge. They're just um, close. Want to narrow up the travel lane to one-way traffic, one-lane traffic. Sorry. But that does impact the turning radius from north onto the bridge. So the yes. bus route goes that direction, and and the uh, fire apparatus, if it's trying to make that that maneuver, it, it's going to be a tighter one. And just pray that we don't have a major accident on Route Two, where this becomes Route Two. Agreed. Oh and, and yeah. Experience that when we have that that shutdown in Farley, and traffic gets redirected in two directions yeah yep. you're absolutely right yeah 
So sounds like I know you all haven't taken a vote yet, but it sounds like you want me to draft the recommendation to the board and the FinCom that we do the full engineering at the special yes. town meeting. And I should recommend it's coming out of free cash for right now. And we'll let FinCom and the board decide if they agree with that. Um, I don't care where it comes from as long as it doesn't come out of capital. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I'll put that forward. Um, Can I just make that the motion? Anything yes. but not capital? <laughs> Second. And that includes I, the, the additional sign I, that we talked about too, right? I think that sign needs to come out of this okay. this fiscal year. Yeah. Okay. Can I ask a question? Because I'm a little confused. Because I I always thought free cash came after the end of the year when we paid everything up, and then there was free cash, and it got certified by DOR, and so. Correct. How do we how do we have free cash now? Oh, they don't. Uh, when the certification's done in November, yeah, we get the certified list. So we we were oh, notified. So this is free December. cash from last year. This is correct. Yeah. This is from fiscal okay. twenty. Correct. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Sorry, now, I should be clear. No, 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 no. I just thought I was getting old. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, we just. I think the October special kind of threw us off, and the the delayed annual everything got pushed later. Um, but we were catching everything back up, and so we did get the free cash. We just haven't discussed what to do with it yet. This is about that time where we would say, do I make an article to put it in stabilization or do we use it for something else? Okay. Does that letter from uh, DOT go to Glenn or to the town? I think it goes, I think it goes probably to Glenn and the select board. Um, okay. I was there today, and I haven't received it yet. So I think we have a little more time, but we're going to need every minute. So. Okay. So we really, the motion, this, doesn't feel, this doesn't feel uh, very prepared, but I, I do think that you all are able to respond pretty quickly here. Most towns aren't able to move this quick. So again, kudos to all of you and, and to Glenn's work that we can have this meeting and we can figure out where to fund it and we can move forward pretty quick. So so thank you for all this. Oh, we go by your guidance too. <laughs> right. Good team. <laughs> yeah, yeah, everybody contributes. Yeah. yeah. So we have a motion to approve mm -hmm. the full engineering and a mobile speed sign for a total of $220,000. dollars mm -hmm. Second. My second. Pete's my second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Mm -mm. Nope. Sounds like unanimous. Mm -hmm. I will drop that memo tonight. I will copy you all. The board and the FinCom will be meeting Monday night about this. Okay. I think that's so, what we need. So what, what, before we close here now, the meeting Monday night is also going to talk about traffic patterns? We're going to hopefully have the engineers from Weston and Sampson join us to discuss that. So that would be a great one for any of the residents in, in if I can confirm everything tomorrow, I'll put that on social media and on the website. So any residents who have questions or want to talk about traffic patterns, that may be a nice meeting to attend. Um, yeah. So I, I, a late one? I asked uh, Jake if we could start at 6, and he said yes. Okay. Hmm. So I think so, we're going to start at 6 o'clock. We're going to quickly meet the new officers uh, for a few minutes, and then I think we're going to move right into this one. Oh, good. I won't be around for that, so... So the joint starts at six on Monday night? The joint's at seven, but I if you thought that Incom wants to start earlier, I could ask Jake to schedule it so it starts earlier. Do you want me to yeah. ask him? Yeah. I mean, what do you think, Doug? I'm fine with that. Okay. Yeah, six works for me too. Okay. I will ask Jake if we can make that change. He hasn't posted the meeting yet. So um, so I'll work on that with him tomorrow morning. Okay, what did you guys just say? Six? I want to tell the guy downstairs. Do you want me to have capital on this as well or just FinCom for Monday night? I think capital, I mean, I think FinCom's fine because Pete's okay. not going to be around. So okay. open it up. What do you want stuff? My only concern though, like I said, I won't be around on Monday because I have another meeting to go to. But you know, <laughs> talking with you, you mentioned Linda about making mm -hmm. church, you know, mm -hmm. going southbound. I mm -hmm. have a hard time with that because we're going to be looking at accidents. And I know I, you're talking. Yeah. You know, and because in, I'll never get out of my driveway. I I, I see. I disagree because it's not going to increase any of the traffic that's coming now. It's just going to 
I mean, and the majority of wait a minute, let me think. The um, there's yes, already, you know, well, think about it because when people yeah. get in front of my house, they yeah. either split and go south, you know, or north yeah. or church. And if you're going to funnel everybody down church, yep, it's so, going to be a bigger, a bigger impact. To your to your concerns, Pete. I, Glenn and I started the conversation with MassDOT. We need to go back over their uh, their signage plan. So there's detour signs that they want on Route 2, and that and they would be yeah. close to that East Prospect, High Street, Church Street, North Street to keep the traffic moving on Route 2. Yeah. We need a similar plan in Northfield. Yes. To make it really clear that they're not to come yeah. south. And, and, and correct everybody the 63. Um, so we need our counterparts in MassDOT in yes. Northfield to help us out. Um, because you're right, that constricting this space anymore is going to make this more challenging. You, that's fair, but we need to get the, the signage out on the streets um, to keep people from even going on these residential roads. Right. And then hopefully if we decrease that, you're always going to have somebody who thinks they know the shortcut or they know somebody who lives on that route. We can't get everybody, but hopefully we've reduced it so you're not seeing as bad of a congestion as it, as it could be. Pete, and I don't mean to diminish, you know, your concerns with what happens in front of your house, but I have come out of North Street to try to take a left at at various times, oh, and it's it's absolutely horrible. I mean, because they're coming so fast heading west that by the time you look to the east and you say I can go, and then you look to the to the left, there's mm -hmm. somebody there. But on um, the flip side of that, though, Linda, yep. you come down Church Street. And you're yep. gonna take left. Yeah. You know, you got a short distance. People can find around that corner by the boxcar. Yes, you know, but you can see through, through the railings and you can see the cars coming. That's the only difference to, in in my mind. Because, it's not safe. No, I, I, it's no, neither one of them are safe. But I think coming out of Church Street is safer. I typically, when I come home, um, I come and I turn into North Street because I think it's safer to turn up North Street than to turn into Church. And then I come you think around the it's block. Safer to turn into North from from the West. From the West. Uh, from the West. Only because you have enough room that when somebody is right on your tail and you got a tractor trailer, you can they can they have enough room to get around you right there. Um, so I I usually will take the left into north and then go around the block and, and come in. But then I go out via Church Street. I, I forgot to mention this at the beginning of this. Not only are we doing our sewer repair plus this project, but uh, <laughs> We talked MassDOT into finally doing the pedestrian improvements on Route 2. At the same time? <laughs> we didn't know Probably. we were doing a bridge project at the same time. So you're getting crosswalks at the uh, Pocket Saver North Street okay. uh, intersection across to the municipal parking lot with flashers. Okay. And uh, they're moving the cross at Town Hall to Tim's RV. They're removing that and they're taking it down to Church Street. And crossing over towards the antique store and the candy store. So, again, with flashers. So, you're getting. Wow. Uh, but at the same point, as I'm listening to you all talk, I mean, these are nice improvements, but that doesn't fix the lines of sight and it doesn't let traffic off of North Street. And so, it's something, but it's probably not. It's more of a band aid. It's probably not the fix you all deserve. Um, I think we just have to keep the pressure on MassDOT. You know, this is ultimately it's their road and we need them to be responsive. And, and we can fix this bridge, but that's not going to fix the impacts of Route 2 and, and everything else that you all contend with. So, And I um, would just say if we could have a little bit more police presence during this time frame. Yeah. yeah. We are back up almost. We're, we're down a chief still but for a few more weeks, but we just uh, brought in two new officers. That's um, what I heard. So we hopefully will be back to full complement in short order and we're resuming our normal routes again. So we will do our best to get back out there soon. Okay. Good. Good. Thank you all for meeting. Oh, yes, you. Thank you all very much. Thank you for putting up with me. <laughs> Motion to adjourn. <laughs> Second. At all. Thank you. Thank you. Be safe, everybody. We we have to vote to adjourn, guys. We oh, can get a motion. I seconded it. Yeah, oh. we have to vote. Aye. 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 Favor of adjourning. Aye. <laughs> Hi. 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 What happens when you let me take minutes? No, that's good. <laughs> Most excellent.
Good night, guys. Good thing I couldn't figure out work. how to get out. <laughs> Good night, everyone. Oh, there we go. <laughs>